right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this. Guys, I'm trying a different way. Uh, if you've been following me on Facebook, I was doing live videos, um, and I was having some issues with them. I'm going to try my best to do a recorded video and uh, try to share it through YouTube. That way you guys can watch it later, and maybe it's easier to share. So I've been doing these optical illusion art projects since um, I missed out on my students. Uh, my name's Eric or Mr. Griffin. Um, and since we're in quarantine during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic and the entire country shut down, uh, our school system shut down as well. So I've been still teaching, trying to do some recordings and stuff. So. Yesterday, I did an online a little uh, thing for my kindergartners. Uh, anybody could do this. Maybe some of the older kids could make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, maybe some of the kindergartners might need some help. But this is an optical illusion, positive, negative, noten design. Now, today I'm going to just move up uh, the ladder, and we're going to move on to what I normally do with my first graders. Now, my first graders, uh, the lesson might be easier uh, than yesterday's but because of the straight lines and because of the pattern that we have it can be a little trickier so this is my op art and like i said if you don't know what op art is it just stands for optical illusion and this isn't like a real optical illusion but because the colors kind of like mix it kind of messes with your eyes tricks your eyes in a little bit uh and this is a fun little easy optical illusion art project that we're going to kind of show you how to do today now, I know, um, I don't know if you guys have seen on Facebook or something lately, but a lot of people have been doing these heart hunting challenges. So, if you wanted and you didn't want to do these shapes, you could make it a little easier for some of our first grade friends and you could do a heart and try to get the same kind of neat little fun design in here. Um, I don't have my first graders do complementary color schemes. If you wanted to do a fun little complimentary color scheme, it would make it a little bit more dynamic. It would make it a little more interesting. And it would probably make the, the lines and shapes pop out a little bit more. But we're going to go ahead and get to, get started. So if you're wanting to follow along with me, I'll go probably pretty slow. If not, you can watch the video and do it on your own. Now, Mr. Griffin actually does not have a ruler at his own house. Oh, it's so sad. But Mr. Griffin does know how to make a little straight edge um or out of like a little piece of paper so what we need if you're stuck at home as well and you don't have the shapes that mr griffin applied or like gave to you guys you can just get a blank sheet of paper you need to find yourself a straight edge you might have to fold it you might have to cut it i still got a little wonky edge so i'm probably not going to use that side um and then find something you can trace with so i'm going to go ahead and take my little r2d2 c3po cup and i'm going to trace around that I'm going to trace around one of these little gift cards that I was given by one of our amazing students as a rectangle. And I went ahead and made a triangle out of one of my extra rectangles that I had done yesterday for our op art. And if you don't know how to make a triangle, that's pretty easy. All you need is a rectangle. And I showed you guys how to make rectangles yesterday. Um, and if you cut from corner to corner on a diagonal, you should be allowed to have a nice little triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Guys, this is, this is just something to trace. But there's another little triangle that we could do. All right. So to get started, pick one of your shapes, place it on your piece of paper somewhere, and just trace it around all right there's our little circle now if you do your rectangle straight up and down or lengthwise straight up and down sometimes i have found that these lines these vertical lines messes and meets up with these vertical lines so sometimes if you would like i think i have found that if you do it at a slight angle, it kind of works a little bit more. It gives the op art a little bit more dynamics. I like the word dynamics. 
I actually just like big words. I don't use them correctly all the time, but I still like them. All right. A little rectangle. And if you have room, if you don't have room, guys, you don't have to use a triangle. You don't have to do another shape. You can just have fun. Honestly, you could do a few little circles. And that would be working it up to kind of like uh, my fourth grade assignment that I'll show you guys a little later. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this. My shapes are a little bun bungled. Bungled? I don't know if that's a word. That's not a word. They're all clustered together a little too close, but that's okay. I have to stay positive. I kind of like to think of it like Bob Ross. I'm like, that's okay. I just got a happy little accident. Got a little happy mistake. All right. Now here's where the fun part happens. Now you've got your shapes on your piece of paper and then now you need to take your straight edge or your ruler. And now guys, if you notice on this, all of my lines are about the same distance apart. Now, if you just take your ruler and if you just start drawing lines and vertical lines up and down, you're going to get too many. It's going to be a little complicated. If you want to make it a little easier, I like to tell my students to put the ruler or their straight edge right on the edge of the piece of paper that they're working on. And then you're going to take the other side of the straight edge and you're just going to draw a straight line. Now, now that we have the straight line, now we're just going to move down our piece of paper by putting our straight edge on the last line that we just drew. So I'm going to put my, my straight edge right on the line that we last drew, and I'm going to draw another straight line. And we're going to work our way through. Don't worry about stopping on your shapes. This is where the magic is going to happen. We're going to go ahead and just draw right through all of our shapes. Notice how I have a piece of paper underneath me because I tend to get messy and my wife doesn't like me drawing on the table so I have to make sure I put a little mat so maybe you guys should try to find a mat a newspaper if they still have those anymore and we'll just keep on going we're gonna work our way all the way across and I'm gonna show you how to color it again As you can tell, Mr. Griffin is not a fast artist. He likes to go nice and slow, try to make sure he's precise, matches up his lines. And sometimes he still messes up, but I don't get upset. All right, here's the fun part. Now, <clears throat> depending on how big your piece of paper is, when we come to this last thick section, if I just took my ruler and I put it right here, do you see how I would have a skinny side and then a big side? What I like to do, and I tell my students, if you want to, try to look for the middle line and just scoot your ruler over a little bit. And you're going to make the last two sections a little bit smaller than the rest of them. Now, the only reason I do that is for this reason right here. Now, if you look at this one, I've got all my lines pretty much put on there. If you look at this one, look what happened. I've got all my lines, but then I have this one little teeny tiny little skinny one. I could have split this in half, or I probably could have just left that one off completely and not even worried about it. Um, but I went ahead and put that one on there. So <clears throat> there's that again. Now, here's where the fun part happens. I don't care what you use to color. You can use any two colors, but you're going to do them in a pattern. You're going to like kind of like not cross any of the lines. Now you can connect the same color to a point, but you cannot connect it by an edge. So here's where it gets kind of tricky. I'm actually going to do, uh, now this looks like green and orange. Um, it says scarlet and yellow green. So we're going to pretend these are kind of like complementary colors. This is kind of like a red and green. And I took crayons. You can use colored pencils. You can use crayons. If you really want to, you can use markers and just color it. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and color along my lines of one little section. You have to start somewhere, and I don't care where you start. I like to start possibly with my shapes first, and I get my shapes all done. Now, here's where we do it. Once you have one little pie piece or one little section colored in, you cannot cross lines. So I can't just color this whole shape in, right? 
If I color this whole shape in, would that be uh, optical illusion? Probably not. So I need to skip a pattern. So I'm going to go red. This one's going to be green. But don't go back and forth. Don't go back and forth. Just keep with the red and look and say red, green, and you can put a little red mark in there. And we know that this is going to be red as well. Coloring is very therapeutic. I don't know if it is to you, but I know for me, in this time of uncertainty, uh, I can actually get some find some peace and calm just coloring in a little shape. Now, <clears throat> if you notice, this red shape is in the same column as this shape. Now, we cannot cross lines. So if this is red, this can't be red because I can't cross lines. But check this out. This is going to go red. This little mark will be green. And then this will be red again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Now, I'm going to continue on just a little bit. I don't want to like bore you guys with it. And I'm not... Uh, fancy YouTuber. I have not figured out how to get those time-lapse videos going on quite yet, but maybe in the future I can figure out how to keep on going and you guys can watch me color for multiple minutes uh, condensed down to 30 seconds or something. But until then, I'm going to go ahead and just color for a little bit because I enjoy doing it and I kind of enjoy hearing myself speak. So there's that. It would continue on. We go red, skip one, red, And then check this out. These two shapes are in the same column. Now, this is where some students mess up. They start doing red and then like see another one, so they start doing green. But that's not to happen. Each column is going to be the main color. Each column is going to be the main color. And if there's a shape inside that column, it has to be the opposite color. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this one red as well. Or scarlet or this weird orangey color. I don't know. Not exactly sure what you want to call that. And then here's another red way over here. Now I skipped, but I already saw. I don't know if you guys can see. I knew that this little thing was going to be red, green, red. I'm biting my tongue. I don't know if you guys ever do that. When you get serious, you have to like bite your tongue. Don't let your parents see it. My dad used to yell at me all the time. He said, you're going to bite your tongue off. He knew I was whenever I was serious or really think when I just stick my tongue out. And just, ah, ah, ah. Probably not the most appropriate thing to do, but I had to bite my tongue to really focus. All right, there's that. Now we're basically done with the reds. Now we need to do the background. Now I'm not going to do the whole background for you guys. I might uh, finish coloring it and post a picture on the very end. But if you look right here. I'm going to now do the column. So I know that this column has to be green. So the next column, because they connect at a point, will be red, red, and then this will be red, and then this column will be red, and then with this one will be green, and then we kind of keep on going up through here with the columns, and then um, this column will all be red, and it'll be like that. And if you want to, obviously, you don't need to put a little green dash because once you get all of one section done, once you get one of all of one color done, um, then you just color the rest of it all green. So I'm going to go ahead and just do one more, one column. I'll pause the video and see what happens. And then I'll try to finish it and see if I can post the picture. If not, remember, you can continue on working on this. Might give your parents a little break because it takes me a little bit. And hopefully you guys probably wouldn't need a lot of help to do this one on your own. All right. I'm going to get this one column. Sorry, I'm scribbling. I tell my students not to scribble. And then what do I do? I scribble. All right. So <clears throat> I do like to get the whole thing solid though. All right, so I'm going to continue on working on this and let you guys see once again what the end result should be. All right. 
Have fun, be safe, wash your hands, and give your parents a break every now and then. Love you guys. I miss you. Uh, have fun.